they've just told me they're gonna let me drive the bus. And we're on the SkyTrain. We're gonna show you the simulator and how it operates right here. And we're going up inside the cab of the West Coast Express. And we're at the Vancouver Transit Center. This is their bus simulator. This is happening in today's video. I'm Michael, the channel's Downey Live. Let's get it started. All right, we're starting here at the Vancouver Transit Center. And uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Mike. I'm Vancouver born and raised, which is why going behind the scenes here today is so interesting for me. Our first stop of the day is the Vancouver Transit Center. This is where they keep their buses when they're not out on the roads. And over 400 buses sleep here every night. And over a thousand employees are based out of this hub. After walking further and further into the bowels of the Transit Center, we finally found the bus simulator. Now, the simulator is used to help in training drivers in certain scenarios. We got oh, protesters yeah. we got out in protest. the streets. Exactly. <laughs> Not only do they have pre programmed situations that you might encounter in real life. And we can put in different. So we've built this one for our, for our, for our operators to see. We've got a guy coming across ah. right here. Like police pulling over vehicles. I did signal. But Derek can also take control and operate as a pedestrian running around to bother the driver or as a car to behave as a road rage incident to test and train drivers on these real world possibilities. To the right. Angry lady, sir. <laughs> we got an angry driver. There you go. Uh, but you went and missed those passengers there. Oh, I did? <laughs> Even the mirrors here. So this bottom mirror is obviously a screen, but this top mirror is actually a mirror. Like you can see, you can see me waving there, but it's, it's a mirror that is then shooting off of this back screen behind you. And that, that makes it real life. So when you move your head, it moves as well. That is so cool. Now, when I got in the simulator, Derek decided not to go easy on me. So far, so good. He changed it from daytime to nighttime, full fog and full snow conditions. Wow. You guys actually have accidents recreated in this. Amazing. That's Look at this! <laughs> now, at first, I didn't take the simulator too seriously. Oh, we're drifting. Oh dear. Heavy on the gas. And we've lost it. But as I started to get into it, I think I took it a little too seriously. Can I please get you to stay behind the red line? Actually, you don't need to do all that. Stuff. Behind the red okay. line, please, okay. sir. You're doing really, really well. Could everyone please move to the back of the bus? We've got new guests coming on. Back of the bus, please. Please wait, folks. Please wait until I've got the ramp down. We've got a stroller coming on board. Folks, I said I need this area clear for strollers coming. Okay, uh, let's take a break here. I think, uh, yep. yeah, we're getting we a little bit too moving. worked up here and all that sort of thing, but you're doing really, really good here, you know? Um, outstanding. You know, maybe I'm not cut out for this thing after all. Well, actually, you know what? We're, we're gonna get you to do the real thing now. Okay, you've done the simulator. Let's do the real thing now. If you say so. Yep. If Derek says I'm ready, I believe him. So we're headed out to meet Joel to try the real thing. This yard holds 444 buses and about 260 or so, he said, are trolleys. So there's a, there's a fine appreciation of bus drivers that we don't always take into consideration. We know they deal with customers and customer service, but they're also operating some of the biggest vehicles on the road on some of the busiest roads. These aren't just open highway. This is downtown and whatnot. So. Now I'm gonna to get to experience that. Not the downtown stuff, but uh, see what it's like to drive one of these. Seatbelt is first, I know that. This is an electric trolley bus that normally gets its power from overhead power lines, but to make sure I don't break anything, we're driving it in its emergency battery power mode. I'm ready to drive. Everyone hold on! Oh now my just gosh. Now just cover the brake with your foot. Just cover the brake and see how it'll just keep going, almost like cruise control. Yeah. I have to say, this is a very easy, gentle, soft vehicle to drive. Wow. You see those dots on the ground there? Yeah. We call those horn dots. And you can almost treat it like your vehicle is dropping those dots right out of your, the horn on the front of on your steering wheel. Nobody panic. Please stay seated. You can chat amongst yourselves. I'm just going to reconnect us. Nothing to worry about. I am a trained professional. With the driving going a little bit better than it did in the simulator, it's time to try to hook up the bus to the electric cables above. Maybe natural. Up these steps is where they check and change the carbon connection points between the trolley bus and the overhead wires. So the bus pulls in here and then there's a person standing here that'll pull these down and change the carbon on top of the pole, which is the conductor that conducts electricity from the wires, the cables overhead into the bus. And this is, this is that station. 
next part is where I truly appreciated the skill and ability to multitask from every TransLink bus driver out there. This was by far the most difficult part of my training, and I can't imagine how much more difficult it would be with the added pressure of a bus full of passengers while in traffic. So we're just about to go through some switches here. I'm gonna be controlling it, and I've just realized how much multitasking is at play. Not only are you dealing with passengers on board and managing the traffic around you, you also have to accurately get the speed right through the switches while also deciding and controlling the switch and managing all of that at once. So uh, let's give it a go. And, and now start powering your switch. Push your switch forward. Keep, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Watch. They made it, they made it. And you can see that they came over, very nice. I can, wow, now we can keep going. So now we're looking for row 18. And now we're gonna go through a second set of switches that should run automatically without me having to power it. So nice and slow. So this is 18 here, so we're gonna go slow left down, here. Bring it down, yep. And start your turn on these horn dots. You got it. And you can look in your mirror and Oops. see what your poles are doing. So we're going to 18 or 19? We'll go 19. 19. So stop there. So what happened is right now we're caught on an insulator. Okay. So we're getting that wonderful noise. Yeah. You can look and see that you're stuck on a white piece up there. So there's no power in that. Okay. So when a bus gets stuck on that, you can use your EPU to get off of it. Last uh, stop. Thanks very much, folks. You've been a great rider. <laughs> and that's day. That's one day of your training, only 29 days to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I think I will leave this to you, Joel, and I'll stick with the YouTube stuff, but that was great. Okay. That was cool to see that bus, but what's even cooler is the sea bus. The sea bus is a bus that crosses the sea, taking passengers from Vancouver to North Vancouver and back since 1977. So you might be more used to seeing the sea bus like this from this level, but uh, we're gonna head upstairs and see how the captain operates it. How are your days going so far? Pretty good, how are you guys? Good. Park here is operating. We are, we're now for, headed from Waterfront Station in downtown Vancouver, headed to North Van. If I do say so myself, I think Captain Hark here has the best office view in the whole city. All right, so if you don't already know, this is a two-hull vessel, sort of like a catamaran, and it has four engines, so it should have two engines on each hull, if that makes sense, and we're, uh, we're coming down into one of them now. This is one of the main engines, and as you can see, it's got a huge air filter here. It actually has a turbo and then a massive exhaust system, which actually uses urea to make it have lower emissions. Captain Hark operates each of these engines independently to smoothly slide the sea bus into the station with only an extra inch of clearance on either side of the vessel. So other factors to take into consideration are wind factors and tide factors and ocean currents here. There's a lot at play. And even with us pressuring him and filming over his shoulder, Captain Hark slid right into the station without so much as nudging the wall. I just want for the record, he, he did it, not me this time. With a newfound appreciation for sea bus captains, knowing that they do it all manually, we went to go check out the newest vessel in the fleet. We have life jackets on now so we can we can come out on deck. Look at this. That's the captain's helm right there. And this, this is on top of where everyone would be sitting. Proof, it says TransLink right there. Look at this. So this is, this is very behind the scenes. If you wanna see more of this, I'm putting it on the membership. So right next to the subscribe button down below is the join button. It's $5 a month, but I'm gonna give you the longer version, the uncut experiences the stuff you don't get to see in the YouTube videos because there's so much more that I filmed today that I want you to be able to experience so that's where I'm putting it is on the membership page so click the join five dollars a month and I promise I will deliver interesting valuable stuff for you there but just to reassure you you'll still be getting these regular videos every Saturday right here okay we now actually have to catch our sea bus back <laughs> Now moving from West Coast Views to the West Coast Express. The West Coast Express operates five daily trains and it is Western Canada's only commuter railway. So, it's got a little street cred. Track cred? 
And uh, I'd, I'd like to point out Kevin's mask, if you haven't already seen it, that is the West Coast Express right there. Yeah. On his pretty smile. <laughs> He's blushing under the mask, I can tell. The West Coast Express has a locomotive at one end, but it doesn't turn around when it gets to its destination, which means when it's coming back to Vancouver, it has to go in reverse. See, we're at the back of the train here. The engine is at the other end, but this train doesn't turn around when it gets to your station. It just goes backwards the opposite direction and the engineer, the operator, would sit here and drive the train from the back going this way. And then in the afternoon, it goes forwards, the actual forwards. Oh, look at that key. That's a key. A big plastic key. Big plastic key. And that's basically where that goes. The rear end can fully operate the train, taking passengers from Mission BC down to Waterfront Station in Vancouver in just under one hour and 20 minutes. Up towards the front of the West Coast Express is a lot more like a traditional train. So this is the nose of the train and this orange box is essentially the black box like you know from airlines and it houses a, a few cameras and records data from the train in case of, but hopefully never because of, an incident. <laughs> Holy moly. So we were just in the C bus engine compartment and you saw how excited I got about that. Look at the size of this. Don't touch it, it'll burn you. This engine is huge. A turbocharged 12 cylinder, 3000 horsepower engine. I actually think that engine was bigger than my apartment. And this is the conductor's control. So the conductor is the one that opens the doors and manages all the passengers, but all the buttons are blocked. But actually this station could be operated from any door system in the whole train. The conductor has a key, goes in there, and they can unlock all of the buttons. All of this is run smoothly from the control room upstairs, which manages the station, security, and because the West Coast Express doesn't use its own tracks, it also coordinates with CP Rail. Now, from the big trains to Vancouver's most famous train, the SkyTrain. This is a great opportunity to remind you, if you are in Vancouver and you are riding transit, it is now mandatory to wear masks, whether you're on a platform, in a train, on a bus, or the C bus, please care for each other, respect everyone around you, and let's all wear masks. It's masks are now mandatory. Do you hear that? Unless you qualify for an exemption. Masks are now mandatory. Thank you for your cooperation. See? Vancouver's light rail transit is a train that runs in the sky, hence the name SkyTrain. And we're now headed down into one of the training rooms that houses a SkyTrain simulator. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Here we go. Welcome to the crew training room. Come on in. They should call it the crew sky training room. So he's gonna show us how to operate a SkyTrain. As we know, the SkyTrains are essentially autonomous. They're run through a headquarters and all computer program to run on their own so they don't have any incidents. But on the occasional time when the system goes down, like any technical thing, there may be a glitch at some point and they'll have to be run manually. And every single SkyTrain has a box at the front where you can open it up and there are controls under there. And this is a simulator. So we're gonna to get to learn how those controls work before we actually go and drive it on the track. Lights are on. So now I have control. I need to enable propulsion and release the park brake. Because I only get one shot at this, we're gonna see how fast we can go from zero to 100 here. Here we go. Here we go. This is so weird. I feel like I should have a steering wheel, but it, it's obviously on track. So, wow, look at this. Okay, speed, we're at 80 kilometers an hour. 90, downhill, or oh, we're way past 100. It's, it's the horn. We'll do one more. Pretty good. I wanna say a big thanks to Dan, Derek, Joel, Kevin, Mo, and everyone at TransLink for showing us around today. And I wanna remind you, don't forget to wear your mask on transit. It's now mandatory and wearing is caring. Okay, so that's about it. So if you enjoyed learning about TransLink and you wanna learn more about Vancouver, I have a playlist of Vancouver videos you can watch right here. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking on my face. The channel's Downy Live. It's more adventure, it's more behind the scenes, and I can't wait to see you again. And I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.